Hi, I'm Ann Saylor, and this is Susan Ragsdale. We're from Right Creations Group, and today we want to share with you three different practical tools that you can use related to reflection in your classroom. So it comes from our latest book, Great Group Reflections, which we're really excited about. And we thought we'd just share why you reflect first, just, you know, to get us all on the same page and the same mindset. So I want to tell a story about working with a teen group and one of the girls in the group uh, is going to be the hero or heroine of our story. But let me set it up by saying we did pre-reflection because reflection can be done before you do a task or a project. It can be done during and it can be done after. So we did pre-reflection and in this case our group was a service group and we were going to go um, feed at the mission. So on the front end, we said, what do you think this experience is gonna be like? What are the people gonna be like? What's it gonna, just, what do you think? Mm -hmm. And uh, so they had answers that you would expect, not always the most positive life-affirming answers, such as they thought it was gonna be smelly, dirty, worn out clothing they're wearing, potentially some people who were on drugs, um, you know, those kinds of things that you would anticipate. And so we kind of left it at that. We went, we actually were taking McDonald's at the time. And so my one girl had her bag of hamburgers that she was passing out. And she was looked in the bag and she saw that she had one hamburger left. So she kind of glanced around looking to see where all of her friends were. And she realized she was just surrounded by the homeless and none of her friends were in sight. And she was a little nervous about this because she told us later she didn't know how they were going to respond. And so she brings out the last hamburger and she says, well, this is the last one. And the people automatically started checking in saying, hey, Jeb, have you got one? Queasy, are you good? What about Charlie? Is he here? And so they went through a list of names and they figured out somebody who wasn't there and they said, well, we'll save it for him. So that's what she told us during the post-reflection when we pulled out that list of saying, here's what you thought this experience was going to be like and what the people were going to be like that you encountered. Let's look at that list. Let's talk about what happened. What did you actually experience? And she said, I thought they would bug me for the last hamburger. I thought they were just going to come and take it from me and it was going to be chaos. She said, but they were loving and caring for each other. And so some of these ideas that I had on the front end, they really didn't match what the reality of the situation mm -hmm. was. They didn't match um, how people were caring for each other. And I, my whole idea of <coughs> working with displaced people has changed because of this situation. That's a great story that illustrates the importance of reflection and what our students can grow from reflection. So I'll just summarize what, what you said. Mm -hmm. uh, reflection is a great way to set the stage for new learning, for a new experience. If I'm doing a project-based learning experience around um, making parallelogram art, well, pre-reflection means I've got to figure out what, what is a parallelogram? What are the different kinds of quadrilaterals and different shapes that the students might not yet re might not know, might not remember? Uh, it captures, it solidifies the learning that you've had if you're doing reflection in the middle or after a project or after a unit on biology, let's say. Um, reflection is a great opportunity for you to capture and solidify any learning that has happened. It's a great time to talk about the negatives in an experience and diffuse those and build on the positive. Uh, positives, I find that it's used a lot when I'm doing reflection on stereotypes and the stereotypes, mm -hmm. like Susan said in her story, that we have, or our young people have going into a project or coming out of a project, and it's a great time for a caring adult to say, well, is that really the way it always is? Or should we shift our thinking? Should we change things? So that you're helping them to have a kind and compassionate outlook on the world, not dwelling on negative stereo, negative stereotypes. Want to add well, anything yeah. to that part? Yeah, and just looking at it from someone else's experience. Maybe I haven't experienced what it's like to be homeless. Exactly. And I haven't. Because you couldn't have. Yeah. Right. So how can I put myself in their shoes and look at things and look at how we are interacting and treating them? Mm -hmm. So are they, you know, like in that case, some of what we talked about is, do you feel like you're being, you treat other people or if you're in their shoes like you were treated like you're nothing? Yeah. or you're a thing instead of an, a real live human being. So great way to talk about empathy and compassion. Mm -hmm. Attitudes and beliefs. Mm -hmm. So there's yeah. some practicals for how you can use reflection to grow young people in your classroom. 
What activity do you want to start with? We're going to give you three that you can turn around and use with young people in your classrooms. So we're going to talk about bookends. Okay. And uh, we were leading a training on great group reflections, which is part of what Ann and I do in our, in our daily life is professional development. And so we had a group of practitioners and we gave them the bookends activity. And so they came up with, they chose a beginning and an ending statement, such as in a galaxy far, far away, or this is the story of our people. So in small groups, each small group got a beginning and an ending. And then they had to craft a reflection on our training that we did that started with that beginning, at least had one sentence because we were short of time to add to the beginning, one to two sentences for the middle, showing the arc, the change, that kind of thing. And then a couple of sentences, or at least one, for the ending. Mm -hmm. If you're doing this in your classroom, you can make it paragraphs. You can break it down even further, talking about um, what all you want included in each of those sections. But I thought I would read a couple of their stories. Or I'll read one, and Anne can read one if she wants. I may let you read because I forgot to bring my reading glasses. Oh, okay. So I will you're be You're the reading. official reader. I do have my glasses. <laughs> In a galaxy far, far away, we encountered a realm of possibilities. We fought the dark forces of boredom and learned fun ways to engage students. The clock struck midnight and the activity was over and we left the building with our new books and tools to use in our work. So that was one well, reflection that uh, they did very quickly. <coughs> I think it's what, five minutes? Yeah, we gave them very it, little time. It was very short time practicing uh, these activities. Actually, they only had one minute. It was oh, really, right. really short. That's right. Um, so here's the other one. This is the story of our people. Youth work is in our blood, and we all want to know how to do it better, so we came to this training on reflection. While we were here, we practiced and learned new engagement activities to use with our students. And that's when I woke up and realize there is always an opportunity to learn new things and develop new gifts. So bookends, very fun, creative reflection. You've got that little spark of a story. It was a dark and stormy night. And you have the end, they rode off into the sunset. And in the middle, they have to collectively talk about what they gained from the experience. When you look in the book, it actually has, I think it's five or six different scenarios mm -hmm. for each piece of the story activity. So you don't even have to think about it. It's all like prepped and ready for you to go. Just make copies mm -hmm. and cut. <laughs> yeah. Let's do lucky numbers. Okay. Okay. So in lucky numbers, you have students all get together in pairs and you tell them that they need to think of a number between one and five. And similar to rock, paper, scissors, you're going to have them go one, two, and they're going to throw a number one through five we both did two that's so funny and that does happen um for the sake of just no we'll just go with it okay. we'll go with two and two so each different set of partners around the room has their two different numbers and you're going to give them question prompters that go with each number so you pick the higher of the two numbers which us it's a tie uh which is fine that may happen with your young people so we would need to think of two things that we're each grateful for that have happened this week um, again, you can make the questions whatever you want to. So we would share each two things that we're grateful for. The next question prompter, after you give people time to talk about their gratitudes, might be um, subtract your numbers, which for ours doesn't work. Um, we can go again. We can go again. So one, two, three. <laughs> All right, so three minus two would be one thing uh, that we want to work on as far as our character and mm -hmm. our skills go this week? What's one way that I want to grow and let each set of pairs around the room change? You can do addition, subtraction, higher, lower. Um, you could do multiply if you want to get a really high number. I wouldn't do divide because it gets too complex and fractiony, which is difficult for answering questions. Uh, but you can ask a multitude of questions and it's just different than asking a question out loud and you see your students just sit there. When you've introduced a novelty like this number and mm -hmm. the movement of the throwdown, you're, you're igniting a different part of your student's mind, and I think you're gonna get you're gonna get some good answers going around the room. Yeah, novelty, movement, challenge, all good brain boosters. Mm -hmm. And you can, of course, they could have different partners each time to keep doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's great for academic subjects. You know, what's one character in history we talked about mm -hmm. today? What were two reasons for the war that we were just discussing? So you can really make it work well for you.
there are questions listed for each different kind of category in the book if you if you don't want to make it subject so subject specific for your classroom so the last one that we want to share with you is uh, also very movement oriented and it's called comfort levels so there's one way that it's described in the book, but since Anne and I are sitting, we're gonna show you two different ways to do this. Scoot you back so you can see more. The first way, uh, you're thinking about comfort. So if we were standing and, we, and someone's really comfortable when you yell out a state, not yell, when you read <laughs> out or say a statement and they're comfortable, they're walking in place, walking proud. If the statement is a stretch for them, you'd have them stretch up, down, whatever you need to make it so that you're not smacking the person next to you. Mm -hmm. And if it's something they're not comfortable with, you have them go down in a fetal position. Again, this is if you're standing, you would do all this. If everyone's sitting and you can't have them stand, then you can simply do like hands really far, I'm real comfortable, kind of comfortable, eh, not so comfortable. So that's an adaption if you need to have them stay seated. So if I do a statement, I'll respond and Anne will respond as well. How comfortable are you interacting with strangers? Then you decide if you're really comfortable, it's a stretch. <laughs> I'm good, she's a stretch. And so you're getting a pre-assessment of where they are. You could ask, how comfortable are you with doing your multiplication tables around the number nine? And so then you can do whatever you feel. Um, if you're doing a service project or project-based learning, how comfortable are you working with others in a group? And then I'm gonna follow up thinking it's that kind of group. How comfortable are you stating your own opinion if you disagree with people in your group? <laughs> We're both stretchers. <laughs> So that's how that's comfort levels and it's really good to do pre post and you can even take a break during just to assess how your groups are working together. Two of my favorite questions in the book, um, in addition to the ones you said, how comfortable are you doing a project in which you're going to get really messy? How comfortable mm -hmm. are you admitting to the team that you made a mistake? How comfortable are you asking for clarification if you're teacher or your supervisor asks you to do something and you really don't understand or you don't agree with it. So you can get really deep on these questions depending on what your goal is as a teacher. So how comfortable are you leading reflection? <laughs> if you're not comfortable or you want some new ideas, the book is an easy way to get 60 new activities on leading reflection and also going into the reasons of why you reflect, some question models, the rationale to make it more of an integral part of what you do. Mm -hmm. You can go to our website at writecreationsgroup.com. That's write with a W, R-I-T-E, creationsgroup.com. It'll give you links to where you can go and purchase the book. You can also go to your favorite online reseller um, to get your book. It also has a link where you can sign up for our newsletter to get tips and tricks that we send every four to six weeks. And we'd love to connect with you. There are links to our social media accounts and we'd love to meet you in cyberspace, maybe, meet, maybe even meet you in person to come and do a workshop for your crew. And if one highlight, we have a YouTube channel where we interview mm -hmm. different practitioners on why reflection is important, why critical thinking is important, getting even more ideas from them on their favorite tools and their favorite tricks. Uh, that's Ragsdale and Sailor, so you can check that out. And if you are looking for a fun experiential training, well, talk to us. Thanks.